Hello and welcome to this short webinar. My name is Trine Berting and I'm a microscopy specialist at the National Research Center for the Working Environment in Denmark. Uh, I will give a short talk on localization of nanoparticles in liver, both in vivo, giving both in vivo and in vitro examples. At NRCWE, we've had a vision now for several years within nanosafety to ensure the safe use of nanomaterials in Denmark. And for that, we use in vitro and in vivo nanotoxicology. We are also involved in the EU project patrols, where the aim is to develop in vitro and in silica tools for nanosafety. Now, the fate of nanomaterials is one of the key aspects of nanotoxicology. For example, if you inhale nanoparticles, a, a small fraction of those can go into systemic circulation in the blood and in this way end up in secondary organs such as the liver. Now there are many different ways to look at the fate of uh, nanomaterials and one of them is to image the particles in tissue using enhanced dark field microscopy. The in vivo and in vitro examples are titanium dioxide and cerium dioxide in mouse liver and in human liver spheroids. And what we're looking at here is a mouse liver. The black in the middle is a vein and the small yellow circles are red blood cells. All the red circles around are the nuclei of the liver cells. To get a closer look at the objects that you find, found, you can change to the highest possible magnification on your setup. For us, it's a 100x objective. And now you see maybe more clearly like the donut shape of the red blood cells. Uh, and you can adjust the focus for one of these scattering uh, agglomerates. And then also you need to adjust the exposure time. Usually if it's like here, it's metal oxides, the scattering intensity of the particles is so high that you need to, to lower the exposure quite a lot to be able to see and to see the actual particle agglomerate. This first example is actually the same as I used in the the demo just before. So it's cerium dioxide in mouse liver, but I wanted to show you also the, um, the corresponding bright field images. So here, this is what you saw in the demo, and this is the corresponding bright field image. And this is to give you the impression that in bright field, you would probably never find these material agglomerates, whereas they come up nicely in the enhanced dark field. Also, if you see in this high magnification uh, bright field, then you can actually see the particle agglomerate. Uh, and also, um, if, you're, if you're experienced in histology, you can, based on these standard hemotoxylin and eosin stain, you can identify uh, which cell types are interacting with your nanomaterial. final example is from an in vitro model which has been developed uh, for use with nanomaterials in patrols. This is small spheroids made from primary human liver cells. And in patrols, these small spheroids has been uh, exposed for three weeks to titanium dioxide and cerium dioxide. And in the study, the, um, we were curious if we exposed these uh, spheres to nanomaterials, if they would simply uh, only touch the outer surface of these spheres. But then when we made thin sections and image with enhanced dark field, you can see here that the, the, the spheres, the liver spheroids, they nicely take up the nanomaterials so that 
also the cells deep in the spheroids are interacting with the nanomaterial. And um, here's a close-up for you to see. So for example, here's a cell nucleus. So this could be a cell that has taken up uh, quite a lot of, of nanomaterial. Same here, you have actually two nuclei and possibly a cell boundary here. Uh, and out here you see some nanomaterial still sitting at, at the uh, external surface of the, of the sphere. By imaging the localization of particles like I've shown, we can identify organs and cell types that interact directly with nanomaterials. And in this way, we support the development of relevant in vitro models for nanosafety testing in patrols. Thank you to my colleagues at NRCWE and our partners in patrols. And thank you for listening.